Seth, I have a question. I, and I don't want to sound like a smartass because I'm not trying to be a smartass. Uh, well, Sonia, I don't know about all that. <laughs> what you got? But, um, so, like, calculating all that stuff uh, in Florida, like, my title company does all that. So, mm -hmm. why, why is it important that we know that. Like I said, I'm not trying to sound like a... Yeah, well, you, number one, you do sound like a... No, I'm kidding. Um, here's the thing, Sonia. I, I want you to picture this, okay? If you are helping me buy a $500,000 house and we've gotten through and, and we're almost at closing and the attorney sends me, a consumer who has never bought a house before in my life, a copy of a closing disclosure... It's going to look like an alien language to me. And so I'm going to look at you, Sonia, and I'm going to say, Oh my God, Sonia, what is all this crap on this piece of paper? And you say, I don't know. I'm going to be like, Aren't you supposed to know? No, I just rely on other people to do it. I don't have a clue what's going on. This is just numbers on a paper. You just helped me buy a half a million dollar house and you can't be bothered to know what I'm agreeing to sign at closing? Hey, would you feel good about that? It's kind of the same thing about this class, right? We're dealing with contracts. And if you bring me an offer as a seller with this offer to purchase and contract, and I say, Sonia, 16 pages. There's a lot of provisions in here. What am I agreeing to when I sign this? And you say, I don't know. It's just a contract we use. I'm going to say, which contract do I use to fire you, Sonia? Because I need you to know what the hell you're doing. You have an obligation to be able to guide somebody. Folks, you are a real estate professional. And professional means there has to be something that makes you special compared to Joe Schmo on the street. And if there's not, then you're not a professional. You've got to know this because your clients need to know this. And as the professional, you have to help them understand it. You will never do a closing disclosure in your life from the word go. But you will be expected to verify the accuracy of all information that you have information on. Or all information that you have knowledge of, should I say. And so that's why. You will be asked by your clients, what am I looking at? And if you can't explain it, they're not feeling good about you as their agent. Why don't you know? Don't you do this for a living? Don't you help people buy and sell houses? You see this every single time you do a closing. You don't understand what you're making me sign, what you're asking me to sign? Does that make sense? I, yeah, I've I, I caught a mistake on a, um, on, on a closing statement before. So, I mean, but I just, I mean, I've never personally went through and calculated their taxes to make sure it's 100% accurate. Well, after this class, you should be. Because here's, let me tell you this, Sonia. Yeah. They are very often incorrect. Because if you've got a closing date of May 15th, but then we sign an agreement to amend and we move it out two weeks, that paralegal is going to forget to change the tax preparations. I promise you they are which means one of the buyers or sellers is getting screwed and one of them is getting a benefit because somebody just got two weeks of extra money that they weren't supposed to get because they don't change them. You've got to catch them. They, that's exactly right, Kirsten. They are more incorrect than you think. Yeah. They, they make mistakes all the time because these paralegals are dealing with thousands and thousands of these a year. It is your job to check them for your clients. And I'll make another statement here, folks. Almost always, these closing disclosures default to adding courier fees to the buyer and the seller for loan payoffs and things of that nature. Well, folks, I can't tell you how often I see a $50 courier fee being charged to my seller who has their home completely paid off. That's $50 that's just going to go to the attorney for nothing they're doing because there is no courier fee for loan payoff. But they always default to that. And you've got to know enough to go in and say that courier fees for loan payoff, my seller owns the house outright, they shouldn't be charged that $50. And they'll say, oops, yep, I'm sorry. It just defaults there. We'll take it off. There are so many mistakes on these things day in and day out. And if you don't understand it, it's very hard to find them.